Now here's a tricky configuration which I'll briefly touch on that combines the two different configurations we've seen before and a couple of the things we've looked at. It's the differential amplifier. You know how I said op amps are essentially a differential amplifier, that's how they work, but you have to, but they do that in the open loop configuration. So they're hopeless, they're useless for that. But if you combine the not uh, the inverting amplifier configuration that we just saw, so we've got the feedback going here, our signal going in, that's a standard uh, inverting configuration. And we have exactly those two resistors that we saw before to bias that voltage up. But instead of going to the supply rail, we make that our other differential input. And bingo, it becomes a differential amplifier. I'll let you go through the actual calculation yourself to find out, but basically the difference that we're feeding in, if we're feeding in one volt into here and 1.1 volts into here, we have a difference of 0.1 volts. And the gain of this amplifier, exactly like the inverting configuration, negative R2 on R1, we used RF before, I'll call it R2 here. So R2 on R1, 10K on 1K, we have a gain, and you've got to add negative in there, so it's a gain of minus 10. But because our bias voltage is not fixed, it's actually the differential input signal. Aha, uh -huh. look what happens. We've got one volt here, we've got our divider here, R1, these two values are the same. R1 is equal to R1 here, R2 is equal to R2 here. They must match precisely to get good common mode rejection ratio, which we won't go into. But suffice it to say, if we've got one volt on this point here, relative to ground, we'll have 0.9090909 repeater at that point there, and that becomes our virtual ground. Bingo, we'll have that same voltage there, and then we'll have our 1.1 volts here, that has X, and then you subtract uh, that from that, that you get X amount of current flowing through here, which then must flow through the 10K, which has 1.909 voltage across it. Subtract the difference there. It's exactly the same configuration as before with the biased voltage, but then we're left with an output voltage of minus one. So we've amplified the difference in our input signal by the gain here, 10. It's not a terrific differential amplifier, but it works. So we've tamed our op amp, that is a differential amplifier anyway, but pretty unusable. We've actually made it into a pretty usable differential amplifier. Beauty. Just combines both of those techniques. And there's lots of tricky stuff like this you can do with op amps. And just briefly, another one of these tricky configurations goes back to the name, the operational amplifier, and one of those mathematical operations, the integrator. I won't go into integrals and all that sort of stuff, but what we can do, a uh, basic inverting configuration here, except instead of a feedback resistor, we have a feedback capacitor. What does that do? Well, our standard input voltage here, following the rule, no current flows in, but we have a virtual ground, of course, rule number two. So if that's 1K and that's one volt there, well, we have one milliamp flowing through that resistor. Where does it flow? It can't flow into the op amp. It's got to flow up here and through the capacitor. So you've got effectively a constant current of one milliamp. You've just made, this is now a constant current flowing through this, this resistor. And when you have a constant current flowing through a capacitor, you end up with well, in this case, it's going to ramp negative down like that. If our input go, if our input is a step and it goes up like that, the constant current, because it takes time to charge a capacitor, the voltage on the capacitor will increase like that. I say increase because it's an inverting amplifier, so it's going to go negative. But that's what it does, and that's an integrator, and that is actually a mathematical integral of your input signal. Anyway, that's way too much theory, more than I wanted to do and longer than I wanted to take actually, but suffice it to remember that these two rules of op amps allow you to analyze practically any configuration. And as a bit of homework, I go recommend you look at the sum in op amp configuration, the sum in amplifier and figure out how it works because you're gonna be using those two rules to figure it out. So I'll leave that one up to you, but enough of that. Let's head on over to the bench here and see if we can measure some stuff. Make sure I wasn't bullshitting you about this virtual ground stuff. Let's check it out. Sounds a bit sus.